Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about Material Maker. Now, if you've been around here for a while, you know I am a big fan of this application. If you're not, hey, welcome to the channel and welcome to an excellent free and open source app. This is Material Maker. This is the closest thing you are going to find to an open source alternative to Substance Designer. Uh, it is just, again, a really cool app, and I have talked about it for quite a while because of, well, this. It's been stuck on 1.3 for a very long time. It's been well over a year since the first alpha of 1.3. 4 was released, and now we're up to the release candidate. So any day now, we should be getting Material Maker 1.4. So why the heck should you care about this application? Well, if you want to create uh, materials procedurally, this is the perfect tool for doing it. And I absolutely suck at using this tool, but at least I can open the door and you can decide where to go from there. So this is kind of how it sets up. So over here, you've got this graph that goes together to make your uh, material. Over here, these are all basically, you can think of this as the ingredients for your recipe. If if you wish. Uh, and then what we've got on the other hand is previews of each little bit. So I'm going to show you a very simple piece. I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to make a uh, runes. So here, and we'll start with some runes. So if I highlight the runes over here, you can see the generated 2D texture there. And this is grid base or node base. So I just drop this into that and there is our result. Now I actually don't want to create a static PBR, I want to create a dynamic one. So you can see here you got a bunch of different options here. You can create a ray marching material, uh, dynamic material, um, a static PBR material displacement, and so on. Again, I'm going to do a dynamic PBR material. Assume this was for a game. That's a big part where Material Maker really shines. This is well integrated into a variety of different game engines, as you can see exporting material, we've got Godot, Unity, and Unreal Engine built in out of the box. So here we got our simple runes connected out, and there you can see our image. By the way, we can switch this preview over. Uh, we can now actually, with 1.4, we can actually drag and drop in a GLTF file to preview it on if you had your own model you wanted to check. But as you can see here, you can easily swap it out. You also got control over here over the HDR environment to work with, and another new feature that we've got in 1.4 is we now have new tone mapping options. So if you're using uh, Blender, for example, you can match up to the um, AGX or ACES film mapping, uh, which are also available in Godot. And so then you can see an exact kind of version of what your material will look like. And it should be consistent because you're using the same tone mapper all along. So there you go. It's very simple. So we got here is our runes. So we could change these values here. You can see it's going to create a different number of rows. Now let's say we want to take these runes and make them colored. So we'll just go and see it here and do a colorize like so. So filter, colorize, and then we will drop that into the color channel instead. And then we just come up here, drop down the color on it. And let's go ahead and so that's the black. We want to leave the black the same. So we'll select the white selection or right over here. And then we'll go in here and say, all right, bright red. So there is our now uh, bright red results over there. And we could also do see a number of different maps going on down here. So we've got metallic and so on. So let's say I wanted to create a normal map from this as well. I just come in here and create a new normal map out of it. I click here and you'll see there is the previewed normal map. We've got a number of different options for how to go about generating it. Uh, but turn buffering off to actually see the result, I believe. So there we got our updated uh, normal map here. And now I'm going to go ahead and drop that into our normal map channel over there. And now the normal map is being applied. And you've actually got this slider for the amount to apply it right there. So you can do the same thing for emissive map and so on. So this is my super simple example. We could do things then like I could have brought this one in over here, dropped it into a tiler like this. Drop the Tyler then into the Elbado channel, like so. You can see much different results. Now, interestingly enough, I have to move the color to the opposite side. I'm not 100% certain why this is the case, uh, but it is. So here, if we want that to display with the colors, there we go. Now, of course, your normal map is still using the old results. So you probably want to take your normal map over here and instead pin it to the generated tile result here. But as you can see, these are how all these various different pieces work together to create your 3D material. Then you take your 3D material that you've created here and you can go ahead and say, okay, I want to export that out. So let's go to Godot. Godot 4. One thing I don't like about Material Maker is it doesn't use a native file system. It's got this um, file chooser here that they've created. Not my favorite thing ever. But I'm going to drop this into a Godot project I have going on. Uh, we will call this Matt and save that out. So what this is going to do is create a material for us. Come over here to Godot. You're going to see it dropped in and created our resulting material right there is create a new 3D scene. Uh, to our scene, we will add a mesh instance, um, create that as type, I don't know, let's stay consistent, sphere. 
Uh, and then on our material override, we have our new material. We'll drop our material into our material override. And there you see, that is how easy it is to get it from the one system to the other. So this is built for working directly with game engines. As you can see here, we again do have exports for Godot, Unity, and Unreal Engine all supported, which is very nice. Now this has been my basic ass example, but there are some really cool ones out there. What I'm gonna do is go ahead here, load, and you see load material from website. And this actually integrates into the Material Maker website. And you're gonna see here, a number of different options available. So you get an idea. Let's do something a little bit, uh, a little bit more complex than what I did. Let's do this uh, gloom field right over here, or gloom field. I'm not really sure what that is. So you can see all of the different pieces that go together. So there again is your resulting material, like there, and so on. And here is the node network that went together to create it. So uh, again, much more complicated setups than what I ultimately created there. You can see a preview of the various different pieces. So that's the Elbido map. That is the, uh, that is the roughness map. That is the normal map. That is the ambient occlusion map that's generated. And that is the depth map. So these are all pieces that work together to ultimately create an image such as this. Again, really cool uh, what you can create here. And it goes way beyond that. Another example here from the uh, material websites I'll go ahead and check out. So let's go load another one. And the nice thing here is this is a great way to learn it. Basically, just come on in here. You can see there are a ton of community examples available here. Like they just keep going and going and going. They can take a bit of time to load them all. But as you get an idea, there are an absolute ton of them available. And here you can get an idea. This is using the array marching. So this is a more complicated example using sign distance fields uh, to create. And there is the generated object, which again is very, very cool. Another thing we've got is uh, new windowing support based off of the um, the rewrite. So this is a big part of why this took so long is they moved from Godot 3 to Godot 4 to make this happen. So now you have a bunch more options in terms of how you can lay out your windows, how you get things set up and how to get things working, which again is quite a nice update. So there is a ton new in 1.4, which again is right now in release candidate. We've got a ton of nodes available here. These again are your sort of recipes or building blocks to do everything that you're working on. They also have integration in with the community nodes. So so you've got, um, these were all provided by the community, extend out what you need to do. So let's say you needed a node to create chain mail. I could go ahead and add a chain mail node into my palette. Now there's one other aspect to Material Maker. I'm gonna talk about it very, very briefly because quite frankly, this is the buggiest part and probably the least useful part right now. But if you're aware of the Substance Designer application, this is very heavily inspired by. Another aspect of that is Substance Painter, which allows you to paint on 3D objects. Well, we do have a bit of that functionality here. So I'm gonna go ahead, load in a 3D model. This is a 3D model of a pillow, for example. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and create it uh, 1K texture resolution. And this enables you to then use the variety of different materials you created or a uh, community brought in ones, etc., to paint on your 3D object. So you see over here, we got 3D object that we're going to paint on. We could create a variety of different layers here, procedural masking and painting layers. So we've got a painting layer right now. Uh, and then what I could do is pick a material such as um, camouflage. All right, so there is our camouflage node. You can see it's a straightforward material uh, being created here that ultimately results in a brush. We could then use that brush to paint 3D objects like this. Now, the reason I'm not going to talk about this part too much is quite frankly, uh, I don't know how to use it very well. And on top of that, uh, it's, um, it's a little buggy. So if there's a part that's going to crash more, uh, it's definitely this part, but you can see how you can use your 3d generated shapes or 3d generated brushes to paint on 3d models. This has a hell of a lot of potential, but again, this part definitely crashes more uh, than I'd be comfortable with. We got other tools here for like applying dirt on top of your own. So there you can see, uh, the dirt brush that is being generated and you could do a dirt layer on top and you see there is results there immediately. This has the potential to be uh, substance painter esque, but it's very early on. It's one of those things you can look at though and be quite excited by because this is one of those things that could become really, really cool. But I would focus more on the material maker side of things because I think that this is uh, today by far and away the most useful part of this application. 
So once again, ladies and gentlemen, what we've been talking about today is called Material Maker. It is available at materialmaker.org. This is a completely free and open source application. The cool thing here, you can go ahead, you can download it over on itch.io pre-compiled. Basically, just come on in here, grab the version you want. You will notice that the release candidate two that we are looking at today was just released a couple of days ago. Hopefully we get to see a full release soon because as you can see, 1.3 was released back in April of 20. 2023. So it's been quite a while since we've had a new release of Material Maker. So this has been a huge thing. And the big part is he moved it over to Godot 4. This started well over a year ago. Uh, and at the same time, they've done a bunch of updates. There's all kinds of new features and functionality in this 1.4 release. Uh, and this was just one of the updates. So they've done uh, a bit more. So that's on the road. And then they did a first beta. We got new, new features there. I think in the initial alpha, we got a bunch of new features there. So there's been a ton of features added over the last a year and a bit of development as they have moved from Godot 3 to Godot 4 with this project. Uh, it's not all been consolidated together into like a release notes or read me. So if you want to figure out what's new between 1.3 and 1.4, your best bet is to go through these posts right here that'll kind of break it down. But frankly, there is a ton, including again, a move from Godot 3 to Godot 4. Another cool thing about Material Maker, I showed you uh, earlier on, you can actually access in here and go ahead and say file, uh, load material from websites. Well, you can also do that directly on the website. You can see all of the various different, uh, so we got a bunch of materials available as well as brushes. These are what you can use for the uh, painting side of things. Uh, we've got HDR environments for, again, when I showed you earlier on, uh, you can set how the preview looks over here. Um, so you've got a number of different environments there. There's even an environment editor where you can set up and configure how, how well to use the environments. You can download in new environments, etc. all available on the website as well. So there's a nice community involvement here, uh, which I very much appreciate with this program. And then uh, finally, this is an open source project. It's available up on GitHub. It is under the MIT license. The nice thing to see here, more and more people are contributing to it. This is one of those projects that, again, I love talking about because I think it has a heck of a lot of potential. You also notice this is written entirely in Godot uh, with the vast majority of it actually being written in GD script. So if you want to see how that was created, all of those details are available there. Uh, it is a cool project. It's one that I highly recommend that you go ahead and check out. Again, if you want to do so, available at materialmaker.org. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Material Maker. This is a program that I love shouting from the mountaintops for people to go and check out because when you do, you'd be kind of amazed by what it's capable of. Then it helps grow the community a little bit and then more development happens and it gets better and I can talk about it more in the future. Hey, which, hey, I appreciate it. I haven't been able to talk about it for quite a while because again, 1.3 was released in 2023, but 1.4 is just on the horizon. It is currently in release candidate version. Let me know what you think of Material Maker. Have you checked it out? What did you think? Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk Talk to you all later. Goodbye.